Something going on? <laughs> if they want an issue, it is what it is. It's always been that. Ready for any attack. I cannot wait until he's in uniform to play here. Is there any chance in your mind that maybe enough time has passed that it won't be so bad? It'll be a... <laughs> in Philly. Come on now. I know what's coming. Welcome to NBA Today. I, I just love that look. I'm Malika Andrews. I feel like Steve Harvey saying we've got a good one for you today, folks. Ben Simmons, he is back in Philadelphia. It's been 520 days since he played a game at Wells Fargo Center. And yes, that was the infamous Game 7 against the Hawks in the Eastern Conference Semifinals. But tonight, Simmons will take the floor in Philly again in what will certainly be one of the most memorable scenes of the year. And this morning, Ben Simmons spoke to reporters at Shootaround. So excited to play. I'm so excited to play. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. You know, this is going to be an opportunity for me. You know, I've never been in this situation. So, you know, I got to appreciate it and really take it all in. We shared a lot of moments here, um, a lot of ups and downs. You know, this is where I was, you know, I became a man, I feel like. So, um, you know, I, I've always, you know, had a lot of respect for, the, uh, for Philly in that way and, and the fan base. You know, it's a special fan base. Um, but I got a, lo a lot of love for Philly. Is it anticlimactic at all for you not to be playing against Joel or, or Tyrese or James or any of those guys? I mean, the fans will make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's digest all of that. Richard Jefferson, Janae Agumake, Vince Carter, Zach Lowe joining us. Richard, there, there are so many layers to this return for Ben Simmons in Philadelphia, but on the court, what are your expectations here? Well, hopefully he can continue building off of what he's done the last couple of days. That's what's been so exciting. And we've talked so much. And, yes, there was so much attention on him, the way he finished the one season, didn't play last year. But within those two things, there was a year of basketball miss and a back surgery. People are like, oh, his back is hurting. He had back surgery. Like, you don't go under the knife unless you have to. Every athlete will tell you that. So the fact that it's taken him, you know, a couple of weeks, a couple of months to kind of get into this rhythm, that shouldn't be surprising. He's got to feel the strength. He's got to feel the endurance. And so I'm glad to see him making progressions. And I just I just hope people continue to be patient because I don't know if he'll be as consistent as they would like. Zach, for you, you have been one who has said, I I'm not going to get pulled back in. I'm not going to get sucked back into what the Nets are preaching. And yet, over the last couple of games, we've started to see what the full complement of the Brooklyn Nets could possibly look like. Are you back in? Uh, no, I'm not going to be back in for a while. Okay. But look, to your point, <laughs> This is this is this is the team. Let's see mm -hmm. the team. Ben Simmons has had a great last three games. Kyrie's back. Joe Harris is starting to look like Joe Harris again. Seth Curry's starting to look like Seth Curry again. This is the team. No more nonsense. No more complaining. No more absences. No more anything. If you look at the Nets schedule, their next 15 games, with the exception of a game against Boston, who's obviously a juggernaut, are all against teams that are either their peers, teams mm -hmm. that they probably think they should beat at full strength, or bottom feeders. So come out in the next 20 games. Play without any nonsense, without any absences, and show us over 20 games, not one game, not one week, the next 15 or 20 games, that you are ready to be the team we've heard so much talk about for four years. Now is the time. Everything's in place. Maybe tonight for Ben Simmons becomes a turning point that we look back on. So it all starts tonight. Just to be very clear, Zach, your expectations for Ben Simmons tonight are? To play pretty well. I mean, look, it's going to be a tough environment. I have no idea what that feels like. Mm. I have no idea what he's been dealing with for the last year and a half. I'm not expecting him to come out and score 30 or 25. But just play like he has the last three games. Go to the rim when you should. Right. Get fouled when you should. Spray the passes out when you should. You do that, the rest will take care of itself. Dribble handoff to Kyrie and KD. You do that stuff, everything's fine. So you've hit on it now. Richard's hit on it. What he's been able to do these last three games. Shanae, what exactly is that that he can carry into tonight's game specifically? Uh, should I just show you? Yes, Because one of my favorite do. toys right here is the Telestration. Let's oh, and okay. And one thing we know about Ben, Ben Simmons is averaging 16 points and nine rebounds over the last three games Ooh. but that's not the most impressive aspect I'll tell you more on that in just a second but let's start with how he really flipped the switch and has gone back to attack mode look at this stark difference Richard you know numbers from Arizona what is this that's 85 percent he is shooting 85 
12% from the field over these last three games. 16-9 uh, is cute, but that's the real story right here. Over the, you know, his percentage from the field has been his best so far. And those layups that he was missing, you know, now he's making them. And I'll show you exactly how he's making them because he's flipped the switch. So as we go right here, this was before. This was a month ago, all right? That's a carry. Ben Simmons, first of all, calm down, Richard. Ben <laughs> Simmons, is, he's a slasher. He's going to always look for space, right? Even here, if you see right here, he's, he's ambidextrous. He should be able to use his right hand to attack the rim. You'll even see Steven Adams shade out because he's worried about three seconds. But instead, this is a month ago. He's not even looking at the rim. He's dancing around. And what does that lead to? That leads to a turnover. Uh oh. All right, let's let's go back to Sunday because again, I said he has completely flipped the switch. What I like about this possession right here, as it slowly goes, is that he's flipped it completely with his mindset. If you see him and his vision, he knows he wants to go down down court, downhill. You'll even see him gesture really quick, like, "Hey, give me a screen, give me a screen." Nope. Turn on the Jets. Against Steven Adam again, initiate contact. My favorite saying. And one son. <laughs> and one son. All right, what did we see before? This was probably the most controversial play that we saw that was like, Ben, we need you to be aggressive. If you see right here, Ben, he's ahead of the pack. How many of his teammates are behind him? One, two, three, four. This is a fast break. Kai calls for the ball. He pushes it, and he does his job. He draws two. Ben normally should be able to take this dish and go straight to the rim. But instead, as the play progresses, we all saw this because what happened, y'all? He kicked it out. And what was the response that we saw right here? He was like, bro, bro, shoot the layup. Yeah, but he had KD wide open. And I'm guess picking what? that. Guess That's what, what Draymond picks. KD, KD did bail him out. But now let's go to just a few days ago or just yesterday. And you look and you see how he's really changed his game. Here you're going to see a screen and a rescreen. Here's the rescreen, and again, I said, this guy, he should be looking for slashes to the rim. Where's that space? You see that space right here. He's got that foot back. You know, like track, you've got that track <laughs> mode where you push the foot back so that you can attack straight, straight to the rim, and he does just that. And again, I said, ambidextrous, strong with the right hand, finishes nice off the glass. You see the juxtaposition between him looking, him being aggressive, and him being passive. This is going to be the confidence piece that really helps Ben Simmons, especially when he's coming back to Philly, because y'all know, they're going to make some noise over there. It's going to be a, interesting isn't even the right word. I find myself hopeful rooting for Ben tonight because it's going to be a challenging environment oh. to play in. And, and Ramona Shelburne has a really great piece on ESPN.com right now that has a quote from Ben Simmons saying, there's only so much you can say unless you've actually been in that situation. But guess what? We've had someone who's been pretty close to in that situation, and that's Vince Carter when he returned to Toronto. So, Vince. What is your take on what this atmosphere will be like and how Ben Simmons could or should handle it? Uh, I tell you this, first and foremost, I'll say I think he'd rather play in the game than actually sitting on the bench because you're an easy target when you're sitting on the bench. You're not moving up and down the court. Yes, you hear it, but when you're engaged in the game, guarding your man, you don't really, you try to block out the noise as opposed to just sitting there. How you block out the noise when you sit on the bench? So I think first and foremost, he, he, I think he's excited to play but you go out there and play your game, and this is easier said than done, and you don't want to try to hit the home run. And he's a different scorer than mm. what I was you know, as far as, you know, shooting the ball because that first shot, when you step on the floor, <laughs> is the one. That's the worst one. You know, I, I remember shooting my first shot, and I was just – my goal was not to hit the flag on the other side of the basket just because of excitement and just – you know, ready to go out there and just show that I can, I, I'm capable and, you know, want to win this game, the booze, the whole nine. I mean, it's just so much, you yeah. know, so much energy in the building. And I tell you, when I walked on the floor, just hearing the booze for me, that did amped me up. So, you know, for him, I think he's going to feel the same way. And he's going, you know, you, you, know, you want to play well to prove them wrong. We were chatting a little bit before the show, Vince, and you said that initially getting those butterflies to settle, it, it didn't just come automatically. Yes, you had a very good game that game. But no. the, the first quarter, what happened? So, you know, getting getting those butterflies out of the way, you know, I, like I said, I wanted to win the game in the first quarter. I tried to make every shot, and I was, it was more laser instead mm. of just shooting the ball. So, rough first quarter, and 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 I played better in the sec in the second quarter. And, and, and you know, it, it was great to have your team behind you and, and supporting you. But I had a a little birdie on my shoulder who was a teammate, and he got in my ear and he said, "What, Richard Jefferson?" Uh, you know, I don't know if we could save that for the ear, but it was, I basically said we had your back. We had your back, and that's what your teammates need to do in this moment. And when when the I have your back is not like 
uh, it, it, it's more from a space of you go play your game, we'll fill in the blanks. Like we know Vince is a scorer. Ben Simmons is a different player, like, like, like Vince said. So he's going to mm -hmm. create for other people. That's where his teammates have to have his back. For me personally, and then later that year, we played against Toronto in the postseason. And I stand by that. Playing against when we got them in the postseason, that was far more intense mm -hmm. than the regular season game. Now, I know all the time with Ben Simmons, but watching Vince have to navigate that in the postseason where teams were getting, where the crowd was getting ready to see him for multiple days, that was even more intense for the situation. But I think Ben is going to be fine. But like flying under the radar here. Uh uh, Vince, are you telling us that Richard Jefferson was a good teammate? No, no, say, no, 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 no. How can we replicate in this that? Moment, he, in he this was. moment. He was. Then what happened, he Richard? He was a great teammate, and it, it's tough because it's something I needed I to hear because now. I was just so <laughs> locked in on trying to win. <laughs> I was so locked in on trying to win, and I had a better second half because I, 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 the, the game started to slow down. I said, yeah. you know what? It's just a game. It's not just a game, but you kind of have to play mind games with yourself, as you know. So can get, and then we got to this situation right here. Yeah. You know, Jay Kidd told us, he said, I'm going to get the ball off and I'm dribbling it down and, and you shoot it. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and I, I, t I remember telling, I remember telling Lawrence Frank, I'm going for three, period. That's it. I, you know, I'm going for the win and, and there <laughs> it is. And I remember the, seeing that shot go in and that, that was the reaction. I was locked in. I yeah. was just locked there. <laughs> And I just remember seeing Jay Kidd. I was like, whatever he does, it's going to whatever. And okay. it was just a great moment, and it's a great feeling. So for Ben Simmons, he just has to be aggressive. I think him being mm -hmm. aggressive opens things up for him, and that's how we can decipher him having a great game. And that's a step that he has taken recently, as you saw in my breakdown. But one thing I heard actually from Scottie Pippen when he was here at ESPN, he said, if they boo, it shows they care. Mm. And so you have to really know that this motivation is going to help you for the long term. So it is a big step that he's – going to play. I just wish Joel was there. You know sure. I wish wanted, Joel was there. The Tyrese Maxey was there. The whole compliment of players. So if they boo, they care. That means Philly really is going to care tonight. We're going to have more on Ben Simmons returning to Philly still to come here on Ooh, NBA Toby. Today. Our reporter is Nick Friedel and Tim Bontemps. They join the show live from the city of brotherly love. Plus, did you know that the one seed in the West is separated by only a game and a half from the ninth seed in the West. We dive into the wild, wild Western Conference that's coming up still on NBA Today. And we need to catch up since we were last on air. So I want to do this to play. Oh, don't be nosy. I am nosy. She's oh, super nosy. Say? <laughs> Malika is. No, I didn't oh, say that. Oh, amazing. All right. A reminder, we're going to play Chop It or Drop It. This is how it's going to work if you want to play on this topic. If you want to chop it, talk about it. You say chop it. If you don't, then you say drop it. We're going to start here. On Friday, Giannis, he missed a career-high 11 <laughs> free throws in the Bucks' eight-point loss to the 76ers. Then after the game, Giannis was trying to get some free throw practice in. That's when Sixers center Montrezl Harrell came out, took the ball from him, and then there was some back and forth. Giannis got two more basketballs, came back out, and by then, the Sixers arena staff had a ladder in the way of the hoop. Giannis proceeded to push the ladder out of the way. Richard, you had some reaction to this on TikTok. Are we chopping it or are we dropping oh, it? Oh, we're chopping it. And, <laughs> and any reference to my TikTok, and this is the thing. Vince knows this. Everybody knows this. Pre-game, you're, you're supposed to open up the court 90 minutes before, right? And teams will wait till 90 minutes. That's like per NBA regulations. Post-game, you are not entitled to that. Is it petty? As the petty television show we are, and, I, are. Am, and I am Richard Petty, and the, <laughs> we are you the, are. Yeah, we we are the petty that. teams here. <laughs> Montrez Hedl is entitled to that on his home floor. And I think Giannis was like, hey, I just want to shoot my free throws. And Montrez has the right. And if you see the, the original video, there was a coach or somebody rebounding for Montrez was like, hey, this is we need to use this because we might have a flight or we might, I don't know the entire situation. But ultimately, the road team, road players are not entitled to that. If they need to break down the floor and everybody's like, there's two hoops. Well, they were breaking down one hoop and then Montrez was shooting. So when Montrez, when, when Giannis wouldn't clear the four, Montrez went to the other hoop and then Philly and then Philly took the ladder over there point being is this yeah it escalated past the point of anything that was positive I don't think anyone really did anything wrong but the lesson learned here for all the people at home is post game the road team is not entitled to anything anything that's part of like when you play in the playoffs you don't talk to opposing players until the series oh. is over so there are certain oh. <laughs> things that go in hey. inside this that people need to understand Vince Hey, RJ, I want to add to that. Playoffs is worse. Like, it, I mean, it, I don't even think he would have gotten any shots up because he wouldn't be able to find a basketball to do so. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with, you know, it, at home, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like that. So I understand Giannis's frustration. 
Uh, but, you know, it's just... I mean, it's a little pettiness, right. but... It's been, you know, I mean, petty. it, it did remind me of but the great... But it is what it is. It's just, it's just, it is what it is. It is what it is. It reminded me of the, the great Lee Jenkins wrote a profile back in the day on Giannis in his early days, and he used to do this after every single game. He would go out and shoot. We don't see it very much from him anymore, but this was a part of his routine, particularly when he struggled. Moving Keep on. Keep it in Milwaukee. Last night, Donovan Mitchell took a rebound <laughs> away from his teammate, Evan Mobley. Mobley <sighs> finished the game one rebound shy of a double-double. Shanae, are you chopping or dropping Mitchell with the rebound? Here? I'm half and half. I'm chopping it up to give of my time you to Vince, are, sis. Vince Carter because he explains why double-doubles matter. But first, I'll say this. Mm. Take the free meal. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Don is like, this is just a summation of the Cavs and their chemistry that they're building, all the good vibes and all that stuff coming off of a win. But yeah, take the free meal, Evan Mobley. Many more double-doubles in your future. Uh, Vince, tell him why double-doubles matter, actually. Well, double doubles, I feel, I feel matter to a lot of young guys, especially an up, up and coming young guy. He wants to establish himself as a household name and a double double machine. Mm. So every double double to him matters. And, I, and also, there's a lot of guys, a lot of bigs, who will always tell you, you know, it looks good when it comes contract time <laughs> to see how many double doubles that you get. And you don't want to leave any double doubles on the table or left behind, if you know what I'm saying. So that's why I understand. And you can tell, like, they understand how it, how important it is to him because of Donovan's reaction. It's like, oh, my bad, bro. Yeah. Like, that's just, I mean, that just shows good, great camaraderie and, and, and teammates We're loving it. We're trying to get the 20 on the year, bro. So. It I, is. I, yeah, I've done this multiple times. One time we were, we were wide. The game was over, mm. and Jason Kidd needed one more assist for a triple-double. Mind, triple mind, <laughs> mind you, Houston was just standing there. You know when you're running out the clock? And so it was like, we're just dribbling. Jason Kidd comes over to me. He's like, hey, I need one more assist for a triple-double. And I'm like, bro, I'll shoot it. So he tossed it to me. I shoot a three. They were not even playing any defense. That's like cardinal rule you do not do. We shoot. I shoot the three. Yeah. It goes in. We sprint off the floor. They were mad. They were super <laughs> mad. Because it's something that you do. This though, you do oh, not do that. Right. But true. the yeah. point was, yeah, J.K. told me, he goes, I'll take the heat for that. Right? He, he told me that afterwards, he's like, I'll take the heat for it. But those are the things that you do for your teammates. Yep. You get somebody, hey, listen, like, because you don't want to do it solo. Can we, I feel like we got some Ricky Davis. We got a, any a, chance we get a, uh, an opportunity to show him. Ricky Davis oh, shot it at the wrong hoop. Oh, he, yeah. he shot it at the wrong hoop oh, to get a rebound. Watch the, oh. listen, I wish we could show the foul. I wish we could show the foul that happened. Look, he, look, look at that. You see what uh, Deshaun Stevenson was like, yo, you yeah. don't do that. That's petty. Those are the yeah. petty things. That goes back to the Giannis thing. There is so much petty that goes in the NBA. You have no idea. Now, the NBA took away the triple-double because they were like, it has to be a legitimate shot attempt. But these type of petty things go on, and they've been going on, and they will not stop. The king of petty, Richard Jefferson. All right, let's keep it pushing. On Sunday, the Mavs, they lost to a no Jokic, no Murray Nuggets team in Dallas. Newly acquired forward Christian Wood finished with five points, played only 17 minutes. And then after the game, he said, quote, I would love to play more. I voiced that several times, but I just play my role. So here's Jason Kidd's reaction to that statement. Take a listen. <laughs> There's no guarantee, you know, you, you earn your minutes. Um, and so every game is different. Minute-wise, also, uh, you look at the roster, you know, the roster is heavy. We got a lot of bigs. And so for C. Wood, his minutes will go up. We're only, we're only, this is just the start of the journey. We're 16 games into this. Uh, and so I see his minutes going up. All right, Vince, are we chopping this or dropping this? I mean, we should drop this. I mean, I, I, I'm going to say we're dropping, but, but I, right. I want to say this to this. Wait, we're dropping this. Move on, right. we're As dropping a player. No, you can't, you can't but, drop no, I, it. I, I got to say this, though. it up on every subject so far. Go ahead, Vince. All right, well, they're going to chop it, then. We're going to yeah. chop it, because yeah. I got to say this. As a player, we're you are keeping it moving. Oh, you said drop it. Right. Right. Move on. It. Lastly, Move on. Move heading on. to Minnesota, the Timberwolves beat the Heat last night, 105-101. The fourth straight win for the T-Wolves. They improved to 9-8 and and 5-5 and at home. However... Rudy Gobert had a message to Minnesota fans saying, quote, I don't appreciate people that come in, boo your team. When you're a fan, you have to support the team in tough moments and in good moments. There's no team in NBA history that has only had good moments. So if you're not going to support us in this moment, just stay home. Zach, mm. shopping or dropping it? We're chopping it. And can the Wolves just be happy for one minute? Even when they win, there's angst and anger and stuff in the air. They've won four games in a row. Every team that they've beaten has had a big injury, but 
you got to win the games. They needed to right the ship. It's just, are they cursed? Does it always have to be miserable there? The reason they're booing is because the Miami Heat, who have like three players left on their team, are were at that time beating a Timberwolves team who traded 9,000 draft picks and good players for Rudy Gobert. They need to win now, and fans are starting to get a little impatient, but they are winning some games. All right, be happy. Smile. <laughs> I, I just want to clip that off. All right, be happy, smile. That's how I want to start my day every day. All right, still to come on NBA Today. Richard. More on Ben Simmons. Richard, <laughs> leave me alone. Highly anticipated return back to Philadelphia. Tim Bontemps and Nick Friedle both. Hey, to hit shots like that. Honestly, every time he shoots, I think it's going in. Oh, no! The fadeaway three. Welcome back to NBA Today. Man, there was so much good basketball over the last 72 hours. It's our first show of the week. We got a special little mm -hmm. holiday schedule here. So today is our only show. So Richard. What's up? I want to start with you here. Biggest takeaway from the weekend was, and I'm cluing to Monday in that. Look, we have we are exactly 30 minutes and 19 seconds into this show. This is a new record, and we have not talked about the Lakers yet. You're gonna break it. I'm gonna break it. Only Preach. because Anthony Preach. Davis deserves to be talked about. And look, I know people send all these players stuff, and we criticize them. Send Anthony Davis this, everybody. Tag him in this. Anthony Davis has been an absolute monster these last few days. Mm. If Anthony Davis can continue to play like this, he didn't even hit a three at the beginning of the year. He talked about. One to play in all 82 games but ultimately the thing that I like most about him is his aggression his field goal percentage his rebounds and he's doing this without LeBron James if he would have been able to do this a couple years ago mm. they might not have switched up their roster but they felt like he needed more help to be dominant and right now he is being dominant and it's been it's somewhere I hear our friend Kendrick Perkins changing his MVP pick. <laughs> oh, oh no. I, I, <laughs> there's a reason why he's not on the show today. Bron, Bron did say that he's no. playing like his old self. So. Right. Yes. yes. Janae, biggest takeaway from the weekend. Here we go. Light the beam. Uh huh. Light the beam. What? What do you mean? Okay. Oh, Light the beam. What? Light the what? What? It's all about the kids. Where does light the beam and the Kangs come in? Um, last time chance. I checked, when they win, they, they literally light, the beam. light a beam. And they have I've never heard that. Richard, I'd shut up. Richard, Richard, shut up. This is about Sacramento. <laughs> you need to watch a game or two, Thank RJ. you. Watch a game. I just Get did their Brooklyn. Nets game. I Richard, just did their Nets game. Richard, Tamil, but Kayate, okay, 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 okay. okay. Watch their home game, RJ. 120 points per game in six straight games. They've had a crazy 128-point Offensive efficiency. They are the only team shooting better than 50% from the field. They are underestimated, and I feel like they deserve the limelight. So light the beam, Richard. You are just Mike Brown. I think Richard, Shout you were you were in Sacramento. Yeah, yeah, day. Vince, Vince, Vince. I was in Sacramento yeah. for that Nets yeah. game. They beat the you Nets. Look up. They they beat the. Well, yeah, look, look. Did that. you not know where you were? And they, I knew. And you know what? Like it had been so long since the kids, what, 19 years? To, like, since you what were, like, in elementary school. The longest, when longest when you game? leave the arena, there's going to be a beam that's pointing outside. Well, you, you, you know, you go the underneath. The Kings are rolling. Still gonna so go Richard is going to see it. Zach, bonus. are we sticking with the Kings, or is something else standing out to you from this weekend? I think it's probably about time to talk about how the Miami Heat are 7 and 11. Jimmy Butler's out with knee soreness. Tyler Heroes missed a bunch of games in a row. Duncan Robinson can't stay in the rotation. Victor Oladipo hasn't played yet. Bam Adebayo returned last night after missing a couple of games. This is a skeleton crew. They can't even take Kyle Lowry out of the game. He's playing almost the entire game in the last week. They're 7 and 11. They got all those injuries. At what point? 
does this become a serious problem with the season spiraling a little bit out of control? And what does that mean for the trade market? How aggressively does Miami get? How, they, they have a couple first round picks to, to deal. They have some salary to deal. How desperate do they get to? They make a trade now because they're running out of players. This is becoming a big story in the Eastern Conference for a team that was one shot away from making the finals last year. Mm. Vince, take us home. Biggest takeaway. I'm going to talk about that guy by the name of Clay Thompson. Yes. You know what Clay Thompson did against the Rockets? Ooh. That's right. He had 41. He was balling, balling. And, and that's the thing about that. We know Clay Thompson's always listening. He's hearing the whispers. He's hearing everybody talk about, yo, know, does he still have it? Well, the last four games, he's averaging 24 points on 47% shooting from the field, 49% from three on 10 attempts. 10 attempts from the three-point line. So not only is he shooting it well, he's getting a lot of them up, letting us and reminding us, I am Klay Thompson, and I am a splash brother that gets it done. I mean, you see those numbers right there. He's getting it done. And it's good to see, no, it's great to see Klay Thompson back to form now if the Warriors can continue to get some wins, particularly on the road, mm. they'll get back into, uh, into the talks. And we won't just be talking about the Lakers. Yeah, maybe they'll get a little more synergy. I know they just rested their stars, but Jordan Poole had a, a bigger night scoring the ball, so that'll be good. But, like, Malika, Vince was talking about something. Who did they do it against? I'm sorry. My Rockets. Everyone does it I'm against sorry. the Rockets. They did work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, can, do, can, I, can I weigh in here? Do I get to, do I get to put my, my fingers in on a takeaway on this? Yeah, put your fingers in. Okay. RJ. <laughs> do not say that. No, I'm saying what well, you said. Um, I was in Crypto.com Arena last night. And the Clippers were so much fun to watch mm. against this Utah Jazz team. And I had a chance to chat with Reggie Jackson after the game. He's found his swagger again. Oh, he yeah, said that good. Paul George texted him a couple of games ago and said, hey, bro, I just want to see you smile again. Mm -hmm. And he said that that has corresponded with his confidence coming back up, being able to hit the shots, having the offense run through him. And this Clippers team, they're starting to get back right. Paul George isn't in there right now. Kawhi Leonard is back, though. Today, I know we liked them at the beginning of the season. The ah. gears are starting to turn a little bit more. Richard, I'm not even Wait, gonna... Norm also Norm getting Powell. back into... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have a couple of contenders for sixth man of the year in Norm mm. Powell and John Wall on this one. All right, so to come on NBA Today, we have more Ben Simmons to oh. get to. The long-awaited return in Philadelphia. We check in with our reporters on the ground as NBA Today rolls on. Up in that last matchup, but over his last three games, Simmons' confidence it has been rising. He's attacking the rim. He's averaging more than 10 points per game, more than he did through his first nine games. So now joining us from the city of brotherly love with Nets reporter Nick Friedel and Sixers reporter Tim Bontemps. Nick, I want to start with you here. What is Simmons' mindset heading into this game? Malika, this is as laid back and relaxed as I've seen Ben Simmons since he became a Net. He was joking with the Philly media this morning. <laughs> he really feels like he's going to come out here and have a big game. And I think it was crucial what Seth Curry, his former teammate here in Philly, and now his teammate in Brooklyn said. He said, Ben's mindset is in a great place in the last week. They believe in him again, Malika. They know he's going to come out and play like the Simmons of old from a few years ago when he was still here. The consistency is coming back in his game. The belief within himself is coming back as well, and that has translated into how he's playing, especially with Kevin Durant. Now that Kyrie's back, how he's starting to find a rhythm with him as well. But the key here is that Simmons believes not only in himself, but that this group can bring the best out of him, and that's what he expects tonight. And, and this is the, the Simmons return game, but you just mentioned it. It's going to be Kyrie's second game back since his suspension. How are the Nets approaching the balance of their full complement of stars here? They're looking forward to having all three of the big guns out there, Malika. And I would guess that we're going to hear from Jacques Vaughn in a couple hours here. And Vaughn is going to come out and say, we're going to play Kyrie a few more minutes tonight, and we want him to go at the rim. Go back to March when Simmons was in here and he didn't even play. There was so much emotion in that building. It was Kyrie Irving who came out and said, we've got Ben's back. We want him to know that we are behind him all the way. There was a different level emotionally that Kevin Durant and Kyrie hit in that game without Simmons on the floor. Now that he is back, and especially now that Kyrie missed two and a half weeks because of that suspension, they want to make sure that they find the chemistry they need moving forward. These players all know that once Kyrie came back to the floor, 
they still have a championship window open. That is the belief in that locker room. For as much drama as Kyrie creates off the floor, those players know when he's on it and he's locked in, they can be at their best when Durant and Simmons are playing the way they have been in the last week. Okay, so, so that's the net side of things. Let's get to the 76ers because they're without Joel Embiid. They're without Tyrese Maxey and no James Harden in this one. Tim, how are they approaching this game? When you talk, Malika, with Nick about how Ben Simmons feels confident, he should feel pretty confident because, as you said, the Sixers are down their top three leading scorers going into this game, and it's still a little uncertain as to whether Tobias Harris is going to play, though Doc Rivers said yesterday he expects him to. Tobias did as well, and he's listed as probable for tonight's game. But look, the Sixers, at this point, Malika, this is all hands on deck. They know they're going to need everybody to have to contribute if they're going to find ways to win games here with their top three leading scorers out for at least the next couple days with the possibility of Joel Embiid coming back sometime this weekend in Orlando. Now, Shake Milton has played very well the past couple of games with Tyrese Maxey's sideline. They, again, they get Tobias Harris back. They're going to have Paul Reed and Montrezl Harrell playing at center in place of Joel Embiid. But make no mistake, this is a wounded Sixers team that's down a bunch of star power. And as Doc Rivers said yesterday, the goal right now for this team is to just try to get some wins and stay afloat until they can get their star players back. Stay afloat for now, gentlemen. Thank you. We will see you on SportsCenter leading up to this game. All right, friends, let's go coast to coast. And we're going to start with the New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson tied his regular season career high with 34 in a win at OKC. So Richard, Knicks, they're 9-9. Nine and nine. What do you think Brunson can do to get this team above 500? I, I, I think he's the reason they are at 500 in my opinion. Like, look, the Knicks have been a very confusing team, right? They win one game, then or excuse me, they lose one game, then they win three. And they're like, oh, okay. Then they lose three in a row. Then they go win one, lose one, win one, lose one. What they're doing well is they're beating the teams that they're supposed to beat minus the Nets. But ultimately, this is a 500 team. And that is something that now you expect for them to kind of get their rhythm. You expect for them to kind of get in a little bit of emotion that can help them down the stretch. Let's move on to the reigning Eastern Conference Player of the Month, Tyrese Halliburton. Dished out 14 assists for the second straight game. The Pacers now have the longest win streak in the East, beating Orlando for their fifth in a row. Zach, are the Pacers a legit playoff contender? Hey, remember when the Pacers are going to tank and trade their players to the Lakers? Uh, they're on different parts of the standings than we thought they were going to be. <laughs> right. And the Pacers, look, they played the second easiest schedule. They played the second easiest schedule in the league. They're going to come back down to earth. But this is clearly a decent team, a 35-38 win team around 500. And so they got to decide, are we cool with that? Is that what we want to do? Do we extend Miles Turner? Those are big decisions. Well, and then the Bulls, they snapped the Celtics season high, tying nine game win streak behind 28 from DeRozan. The Celtics now have four losses on the season and all have come against the Bulls or the Cavs. Chanae, what makes this a tough matchup for Boston? Really quickly, they're athletic on the perimeter, DeRozan and Levine, and then also they knock down.